Hey Jake, how you doing? R RYK Modular? Yes indeed, hello, welcome. And uh, we could see you've got, uh, well we're excited because of the new Vectorwave. Uh, yeah. But you make other stuff too, right? It's not just that. Yes we do. So originally we made a sequencer for the 100M format, which is an old system 100M from Roland. So we made this sequencer. Uh, nice. And then we then transferred that into Eurorack a couple of years ago, which is this, this module here, which you can hear sequencing and then the latest module is you okay the latest module here is the vector wave which we just uh, debuted last month which wow. is uh, very popular so tell me about it i'm not a vector wave is it vector synthesis or is it wave table synthesis no it's uh, actually fm synthesis and vector synthesis so you get um you get four banks of fm synthesis which you can select on here so it's a bit like a DX7 where you can patch different uh, algorithms and change the levels of all the operators and the frequencies. And then a joystick lets you control the mix between each um, bank. So that's the vector synthesis part. Oh, interesting. Sorry, I'm using the wrong one. Here we go. So this has got several different banks on it here. So is this a mono or a poly? What, what, how many voices does this have then? Uh, well, it's four banks of four oscillators. So you get 16 oscillators. And right. you can choose how you want to play with them. So at the moment it's set up as a vector synthesis, so it's mono. But if you choose poly, then each bank acts as a different voice. So it has its own um, envelopes, and it can be used completely separately. So th there's a sort of element of the TX-801, no, TX-802, with sort of... Yeah, there's a 4 up FM, yeah, with vector synthesis. So it's a kind of weird combination of 80s classics. And so what, what I mean, what made you want to build it? I mean, what was it? Did you just want to mash the two synths, or did, was it from experiments, or how did it kind of come I think to trying be? to put the four up FM synthesis into Euro with a relatively easy to understand interface. I mean, it looks quite complicated. But each page has a, all the knobs allocate to each, each page. So there's no sort of deep menus. Depending on which page you are, the knob has a function. And then combining that with, I think, the idea of using vector synthesis, which has kind of disappeared, I think, since a long time ago. Yeah. Originally, it was inspired by the Synclavio, which uses FM, but it has this uh, tombra, tombra patches, which you uh, shape between them, and that was the idea of the vector. Great, great use of the display. I mean, I love the, I love the kind of multi-purpose of that, and that's the, that is that actually the actual waveform? Yeah, it just samples the uh, DAC output, and then you see it on the display. And the original idea was just to have a screensaver, but it it's actually can be quite useful to see what you're what you're playing. And it's also a fantastic hidden video game, and no one seems to have found yet. Oh, nice, nice like an Easter egg. Well, maybe uh, it's a while till Easter, so maybe we won't get that. Um, so tell me, um, what's what can you see V control? How does it actually interact with the world? So it's got um, eight modulation slots on this mod button, so you can see I'm cycling through them now. Um, there we go. And then you can set up a source on there. So it's got four CV inputs of modulation. Uh, that's M1, M2, M3. And then you select a destination, destination which is a, a bank of the oscillators or individual banks. Or even you can modulate the LFOs. It's got internal LFOs that can be modulated. Or the envelopes can be modulated. All these things. And you can set up uh, one of six of those which can be internal sources like the LFOs or the external CV inputs. Interesting. So did you stick to the kind of classic 4 op FM voice structure and uh, scalings and things, or did you kind of uh, jazz it up a bit? Um, I think 4 is a good number because it's a little bit more understandable for people, because I think the limitation of the DXs was that people found them quite hard to program. So I think keeping it to 4 makes it a lot simpler. And also the fact you can actually take out all the FM, you know, if I go to this voice and just turn off the, um, all the operators, oh, sorry, they all just become carriers, so you just got a whole ton of oscillators, which technically are not assigned ways, but then we can then turn them into triangles by wave ah, so, you, thing. Ah, okay. so you could use it just like a big oscillator bank, so it's really good for pads where you can do a whole load of triangle wave pads, that sort of thing, which I think there's some on here, actually. Um, yeah, so this voice here, is that pa patched into you? So there's a mono, mono voice. So that's just using all the oscillators uh, warped as triangles and it's got some nice modulation going on with the internal LFOs. Whereas wave folding has been modulated. Is that phasing effect uh, a wave fold? Yeah, so I think it's got um, uh, wave fold and wave warping has been modulated by the, by the um, LFOs. 
Not so it's very different from the FM sound. So you can do these kind of these kind of different things. So um, when's uh, when's it going to be in the stores? I mean, what's the kind of route oh, to market? was launched uh, last month, so it's been out. I guess about four weeks, maybe. Yeah, it's been about a month. Right. Okay. It's pretty much sold out from everywhere, which is quite scary. So. Um, and uh, has have you been able to make them fast enough? Because I've obviously. Well, that's a fantastic thing that everyone's talking about, isn't it? So it's actually being. We've redesigned it a couple of weeks ago with new chips, which sounds crazy, but this is the world we live in. Uh, and that's being made at the moment, so hopefully you should have them back in stock in a couple of weeks, I think. Right. Nice. And what's the price? Uh, good question. I'm not that person, but I can find out. I've got an upside down menu here. I think it's 395, this one. Okay. And there's no special requirements, power or depth for, uh, for the module? No, it's, it's, it's a skinny module, so you can put it in a skinny rack like this. It's got an expander as well. So what happens with the expander? You can use all the banks separately as separate voices. So they have their own CV inputs and their own gate inputs. So you could do, uh, you know, you could trip it from a polyphonic yeah. keyboard ah, or okay. stuff like this. This new module, which is really nice. You can have all the oscillators firing from uh, separate sources. Brilliant. Or drum machine. I mean, we, do, we were doing some stuff earlier where we set this up. Uh, might have to break a second to patch it in, but this was set up as a sort of drum program with the PAMs triggering all the different voices separately. Can you store set Because obviously there's a lot of work goes into That's you right. Can, you so can save patches, right? Got, so you can save up to 30 patches um, because, as you say, there's quite a lot you can go into. You don't want to lose what you've set up. Oh, no. Excellent. Jake, thank you very much. Welcome. Thank you.